Hey everybody, welcome to the Song Revolution Podcast, brought to you by Nashville Christian Songwriters. Nashville Christian Songwriters exists to empower Christian songwriters worldwide. I'm John Chisholm, and this podcast exists to bring you valuable songwriting insights, inspiration, interviews, and just all around good fun with some of the greatest songwriters, producers, arrangers, artists, and creatives, and beyond. You can find out a whole lot more about us at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I've got a great one for you today. I've just finished an interview today with Thrive Worship. They're a new worship team from Bayside Church based in Sacramento, California, which is a sprawling eight campus worship family whose songs and weekly Sunday night worship services are really just transforming their Northern California community. These guys are fantastic. I got to interview the primary worship leaders from Thrive Worship, Charmaine Wells, Corbin Phillips, and Peter Burton. We had a delightful time. These are great people, very authentic, very real. They've had some incredible coaching and mentoring from Lincoln Brewster, who is the longtime worship pastor there at Bayside Church, and you might remember his work, amazing songwriter, amazing musician, and worship leader. So I think you're going to really enjoy not only this interview today, but I encourage you to go out and be one of the 20,000 people who have already purchased a thousand more. Their debut album from Thrive Worship has already topped the Christian and Gospel album chart and is showing up on like the Billboard Top 25 Christian albums. It's a great album. I love it. And I love these people. So please welcome to the show Charmaine Wells, Corbin Phillips, Peter Burton, Thrive Worship. Well, I just want to welcome Charmaine and Corbin and Peter, who are the main leaders of Thrive Worship out of Bayside Community Church in Sacramento, California. Guys, welcome to the show. What's up? Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having us, John. Oh man, it's so fun through the miracle of technology. I'm I'm just looking at you guys through Zoom, uh, you know, and we get to talk. We get to talk about your new record and get to talk about the songs. And uh, you guys are you're off to a, an amazing start here. Your album A Thousand More just released with Integrity this month, and you've man, you're just busting it. You've already sold twenty thousand albums and and topped the Christian and Gospel album chart like right out of the shoot. What do you think about that? <laughs> it's, it's unreal. We're speechless. That's why we're not saying yeah. <laughs> We never expected this to happen. Um, it's been a journey, man. It's been super fun. I, I, I uh, honestly, it's just an honor to, to be able to have the songs from our church and uh, the stories from uh, just our congregation um, come to life and be able to to reach a lot of people beyond the walls of of Bayside. So it's been really really cool. It's awesome. Well, I know you probably just prayed and it all magically happened, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> overnight. Just overnight. Overnight success. You just sat down, <laughs> wrote a few songs over coffee, and and here you are on integrity, right? <laughs> Far from that. Far from that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Corbin, tell us a little bit about how it did happen. I, I mean, these things really don't happen by magic, and this is such a deep album. Great songs. I've been reviewing it, and it's, it is seriously a new favorite. How did all this really kind of come about for you guys? Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's been a journey. It's been a process. It's been... Um, it, so, uh, just a little background. Um, so, Lincoln Brewster... Um, who many people I'm sure have heard of, uh, is the worship pastor at our church. In fact, he's one of the senior pastors at our church currently now. And uh, he's been kind of um, shepherding this team, this group of three here for, gosh, a long time. I know for Peter and myself, it's been over 10 years and Mm -hmm. um, Charmaine's joined our team recently. And um, for him, I know that it was a dream of his for, for our church to embark on a journey like this at some point. Um, but timing is always of the essence with this kind of stuff. And so, um, really what, what it boils down to is, um, hours of, uh, devotion and, um, just diligence to the call that we felt like God was placing on Bayside. And that was to, um, start writing original music and, um, hope that it does something for the kingdom. And quite honestly, that started about eight, nine, 10 years ago, we started writing songs, some really, really bad songs. And, uh, <laughs> you know, after a while you kind of get, 
um, you get a couple good ones and you see some people in church start responding. And I think it was about five years ago, we played a song that we had written. It's not on this album, um, but it's called How Great Is Your Love. And it was the first time we'd kind of seen the church respond to something that we had done originally. And uh, it was like, whoa, okay, God's doing something here. And, you know, it was like song after song and it was, I still believe and it was greater things. And it was praise the name a thousand more. And it's like well, song after song started latching on to the congregation. But when you, when you really look back at the whole scope of it, it's, it, it was a process over, you know, eight, eight to 10 years. Wow. What's your perspective on that, Charmaine? Are, as one of the primary vocalists, are you one of the writers as well? Yeah. Yeah. And as, as Corbin was saying, this has been a long journey, even before I came, I've been, I've been around for about four years now, but, um, yeah, it was definitely a process. And, and I, I, I think I got the the best end of things because when I came, um, it was like a well-oiled machine. That's what I felt like I was coming into, uh, Corbin, Peter, the team, what Lincoln has built, I think has, is really professional, really thorough with their work. Um, but just, uh, yeah, it's just, it felt like it's been tried, you know, mm. and been found to be true kind of thing. So, wow. um, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, I can tell by your accent that you're from Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> and <South>. uh, <laughs> the deep. Yeah, so, uh, the deep. <laughs> so, no, we were sharing uh, before the show that uh, you uh, are from Australia and traveled with uh, Rebecca St. James for, what did you say, about seven or 10 years prior to joining the Bayside team? That's right. Yeah. Yep. That was my introduction to, lived in the Bible Belt, Nashville, Tennessee for about, whoa, I think 12 12 years or a little over 12 years now. So yeah, I miss it, but I love <laughs> California. <laughs> do you still say y'all? I do. I actually text that a lot. It's just easy. <laughs> so you step into a well-oiled machine. These guys had done the hard work. They had blazed the trails. They had been studying mm-hmm. under Lincoln, who's absolutely amazing. Yeah, uh, and uh, so what a fabulous, fabulous mentor and coach. And mm-hmm. now you're, you're bringing, uh, you know, out a brand new album, great songs, great music. Um, so Peter, I mean, what's your role in this and how, how has this felt as you've kind of tumbled through these years together? Yeah, it's been, uh, well, it's like, like I said earlier, it's been quite a journey. Um, so my, my role is similar to, to a lot of, uh, you know, Corbin's and, um, I grew up, I didn't grow up at Bayside, but I grew up in Northern California and I kind of came on to the team. Um, I'm almost been on staff now for, uh, 10 years coming up on 10 years. And originally I was hired as a youth worship leader and, uh, working part-time doing that and then part-time doing tech and, uh, grew up under the wing of Lincoln. He, he pulled me in really early to be his bass player. Um, and I was not a bass player when he originally asked me to play bass for him, which <laughs> I thought was kind of funny. But um, he wasn't, you know, having me play with him because I was some good bass player. He wanted to, you know, take me along with him on the road and, and teach me how to be a worship leader. So I grew up learning kind of that industry uh, by observing him. And I, I really owe a lot to to what I'm doing today to, to that guy and his mentorship in my life. Um, so yeah, same kind of deal started writing songs with, with Corbin and the team and, and actually, you know, never really, really was expecting a lot to become of, of when I was originally writing, I, I was kind of just writing cause I felt like everyone else was writing. So I guess I, I better start writing songs too. And, um, writing's always been actually like a big insecurity of mine, um, that I had to, to kind of deal with, um, feeling like, you know, I actually really had something to say through my own personal writing rather than just playing covers of worship songs. And so over the years, um, like Corbin was saying, we started to write some music that we saw the congregation latch onto and that, that kind of was like, it's off to the races. And I, I started to really fall in love with writing, uh, really have a, a heart for seeing the church sing about, 
you know, personal circumstances that were going on within, you know, the walls of, of Bayside, what God was doing through the messages, through what the pastors were preaching and seeing that kind of come to life, um, built this, um, kind of a hunger to, to, to keep going for it. And so we kept pioneering and, and writing and, uh, and here we are with a record, you know, years later and, and it's, it's surreal. It's, it's pretty crazy, but, um, it's been a blast and a really, really cool learning opportunity, I think for myself. So it's very unique, very special. And I wish a lot of other churches, you know, could take that model and raise up. I I know that leadership is a very important value and obviously Lincoln has instilled that in you guys and the other leadership because you, you want to train people as well as, you know, work your gifts and your craft. And I think that's, that's incredible. So here's the one big question that I like to ask my guests. And I think this is a great time to ask it, considering the fact that you, you have been at it for 10 years. You have been working steadily. You, had, you have had mentorship, great coaching and mentorship from Lincoln, and I'm sure many others there in the community. And now you have this big splash of success with this great, I mean, selling 20,000 albums, you know, your first week out. I I think that's pretty cool, right? So congratulations (laughs) on that. Thank you. But yeah, you're welcome. So let's start with you, Corbin. But what do you think was your biggest hurdle along the way to this success? And how did you overcome it? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of things I could name. Um, But I think think one that is... uh, maybe not talked about as, as often is, um, you know, usually when God is, is dealing with, um, something that he wants to accomplish in the kingdom, he uses people that you wouldn't necessarily, uh, think he would use and maybe are unqualified or maybe a little goofy and maybe kind of stumble their way through what they're doing. And I feel like at least for me personally, that was my story is going the, I feel like God is saying, this is what, this is what I have for you. This is what I have for this church. But, it, but looking at that, you know, kind of mammoth of a, of a concept of a dream of a, whatever you want to call it can be a little bit daunting. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, one of the pieces that has fallen into place for this team, uh, is a, just an ability to trust each other, an ability to trust, um, the process uh, to trust what uh, when God makes a promise that you may not see it in the timing that you you thought it would be, but it it's without a doubt going to happen. And so, um, I I feel like for me personally, going through this journey of learning to trust God on a day to day basis and know that um, what He sets out to to accomplish, He will always see through. Um, I think that's why songs like Greater Things find their way on this album because we're we're sitting there waiting and and we we feel like we've heard from God and and we're moving forward and progress is happening but it's not maybe the the crux of the situation yet you we're not to the the focal point we're not to the the big kaboom yet and uh in those moments you kind of have to sit back and and remember what God tells us and that's he's always working he's always working in our lives and what he started, he's always going to complete. And so I think that's, that was the big hurdle for me is going, God, can I trust you? Even if it never came to fruition, could I trust you that I'm doing the right thing here? And, you know, I I mean, fortunately, this has been amazing to see how this is received. And I've said this a couple of times from, from stage as we've kind of gone through the release process at church, but it's, it's humbling because we're not trying to get a number one record. We're really not. We're, we just believe that the songs that have been put on our hearts are meant to change the world. And for whatever reason, God's allowing that platform to happen. And so, yeah, I think it's this, this concept of um, self-doubt and uh, maybe just our human nature meeting up with God's divine nature and those two uh, making a team that is just destined for greatness. So. What about you, Charmaine? What have you encountered as a, a great hurdle that you've overcome? Um, <clears throat> to to be honest, it's been probably on personal level, but on a professional, you know, being in a church such as Adventure, stationed with Peter. Um, Pete, it's been about two years, hasn't it? 
I think. Yeah, almost three, actually. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Um, that's Yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> um, even uh, Adventure, just, just to have like a short um, kind of background story, has come from a couple of uh, just rough situations um, throughout the years and, and their numbers were dwindling and it's a huge church and, you know, huge opportunity, um, but they were just kind of slowly dying and, and the group of people that were left were very hurt. Um, so when they merged with Bayside, uh, Pete and I were the worship, are still the worship pastors. And um, songs like I Still Believe in Greater Things, it was almost as if they were written for adventure. Like it was, it was people that had been hurt and, uh, but were still holding on to the promise that Jesus was going to be faithful at the end, you know, mm-hmm. and it just, um, who knows, I, I, you know, this is where you, you look, you kind of step back and you think this is probably the Holy Spirit, you know, this is probably just beyond even our personal journeys in writing in these songs. This is the Holy Spirit, um, giving a song to people to remind them of God's faithfulness, you know. Um, and so we've felt that struggle in the two, three years that we've been there. Uh, but God has been so good as he is. I think when you wait it out, uh, when you stand firm, and if nothing else, just stand. Like <laughs> um, he always comes through with his promises. So I don't know. That's, uh, you know, it's still, it's still a work in progress. I think even when we come to the place where we feel like uh, everything that he's um, promised has come true, there's still promises, there's still mountains to climb. And so I'm excited for those. Yeah. And uh, mainly because I've seen what he's already done. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? You speak in song hooks. I, I mean, you've been talking <laughs> just a couple of minutes and I'm like, okay, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> great hooks for me. We need to go back and listen to what you just said. So, so many. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so many great ideas. What about you, Peter? Do you have anything to add to the one big question? Yeah. So the, the biggest hurdle for me uh, to, you know, with, for achieving success, I, I, I don't, I feel like, you know, success is, I've heard this said before. It's it's a journey. It's really not a destination. And I right. I really think that we're 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 just starting the journey. I don't feel like someone can. I mean, yeah, there's been some great success in selling the record, but I I still don't feel like like we've reached some some amazing goal. I feel like we're literally just just getting started, and mm-hmm. that's pretty cool to me. I think my biggest hurdle to get to this point, at least for the Thrive Worship Project specifically and writing songs is kind of what I alluded to a little bit earlier is, is on my personal journey, it's been an insecurity of, of my creativity, you know, um, going, uh, is my time and my, uh, pushing forward on a creative outlet, is it going to pay off? I think I, I dealt with a, a fear of like, of what the outcome could be, or you know, if if I'm afraid that all my effort in writing songs and, and putting time in day after day with all the other stuff we have going on in church, you know, because we we run these large campuses, um, all, all three of us, and there's a lot of meeting and mentoring and and discipling that goes on, and so finding time to write songs, it, you got to really dig for it, and. And when you're in the creative process, there's always this thought of like, is what I'm, is what I'm creating going to be accepted? You know, is it gonna, I, I didn't want to let my fear of, of a bad result prevent me from like, you know, a fear of achieving, achieving like what a dream result would be. And so uh, I had to really work through that. And I think I really had to write a lot of songs, a lot of bad ones and be a part of some good ones and really stir that up in me. So my, I think my biggest hurdle really was myself. Um, in this whole process. And so I would just encourage anyone who's, you know, going to listen to this podcast, if you feel like you're creating something or working towards something, and you're not sure what's going to happen, like, if you're going to do anything, that's great in life, you you have to take that risk. And so mm-hmm. it was people like, you know, I remember Corbin one year for Christmas, he gave me a, I don't know if you remember this, Corbin, he gave me a songwriting journal. 
and said, you know, I think you're better than you think you are and you need to keep writing. And, and it's, it's friends and people around me that I think helped kind of push me into this journey. And now I'm very, very thankful for that. And, um, Mm -hmm. I do feel like I've kind of overcome that hurdle, um, in a, in a healthy way and feel like, um, like there's a, there's a lot to be, you know, written ahead. So I just feel like these are, these are great songs. I'm super proud of them, but I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to keep writing the next record and and push forward, you know, and keep going. So it's, it's exciting. So that, that's kind of been my journey. And I guess if you were to, um, ask what my hurdle was, that's probably the, the most honest answer I could give you. Cool. Well, that's a good one. We're going to take a dance break because you got a lot of pop great music on this record. So we're going to take a little dance break and come back and talk uh, maybe about some of your uh, some of your favorite songs on this record and dig into some of the lyrics. All right. We're going to take just a quick break and talk about something that I think is going to be very valuable for you as a Christian songwriter. So check it out. Do you feel like God's given you a bunch of songs, but you don't know what to do with them? Do you feel like you've got a real call on your life to write, but you're clueless about where to start? Or maybe you've got writer's block and you're wondering if you'll ever get the creative juices flowing again. Well, we've got you covered with NCS Membership. NCS Membership is all about community and how to grow in this calling you feel deep inside to be heard. We get it. We know that you just want to honor God with your talents and be a good steward of what he's given you. And that's why NCS membership could be your next right step to grow, learn, be challenged, get connected, and ultimately fulfill your dreams to glorify God and reach others with the same passion you feel. It's designed to help you tell your story and to reach listeners who will love your songs. With your NCS membership, you'll receive 24-7 access to valuable masterclasses on topics such as modern hymn writing, worship writing, song form, lyric development, and recording home demos, as well as discounts for other NCS products, and a deep connection into a community of creatives who get you. There are a lot of songwriters out there, so you need to be the best you can be to stand out, be heard, and become the songwriter you were born to be. Just go to NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com now to check out all the great benefits of becoming part of a decidedly Christian community of songwriters from all over the world. NCS Membership, your next right step to being heard. Well, I just hope that you'll take advantage of that and check it out. All right? We bring you good stuff here on the Song Revolution Podcast. So back to our episode. All right, guys. Well, welcome back. I'm here with the Bayside Community Church Thrive Worship Team, Charmaine Wells, Corbin Phillips, and Peter Burton. Uh, We've already had such a great conversation about some of the background on their brand new album, which is called A Thousand More. It's out on Integrity this month, and they've already topped the Christian and Gospel album chart, and they've already sold 20,000 records in just the first week, which is absolutely astounding these days. So congratulations, you guys, and and thank you so much for being on the show today. I'd like to start the second half off with maybe asking each of you what might be your favorite song or songs, and maybe giving us a little insight into the lyric and where it kind of came from. And I've, I've noticed through my review, I'm on my third listen through the album, it's, it's, it's very pop, it's very dance oriented, which is kind of fun. Uh, but there are deep lyrics on this record. It's not your typical uh, rehash of praise and worship kind of lyrics. There's depth there, and I would attribute that to some of the fine mentoring that you've probably gotten. But Charmaine, why don't we start with you? Do you have a favorite and whether or not you collaborated on it? But what, uh, what, what kind of stands out in your mind from this record? Yeah, um, I. Probably, probably my favorite, and this is very difficult. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go with a thousand more. Um, I wrote it with uh, with Corbin and and another writer called Taylor, and we were on a songwriting retreat, and it was probably the last song that we wrote on that retreat. And um, and I don't know if anyone's been on a songwriting retreat. It's kind of like running a marathon. (laughs) You're exhausted by the end, and just mentally and physically for some reason, even though you're just sitting around. But, um, but I don't know. I think uh, we wrote it really fairly quickly, I think. 
And, um, and it was straight out of the book of Job, a lot of the verses. And it was a song that is just um, uh, highlighting who he is and, um, and our response to that. But my favorite line would just be out of the chorus, which says, Oh, praise the Lord, the Holy One. And I love that we explain that line on the second line. We say, Oh, praise the King of perfect love. Um, because holy means set apart. And he's only set apart because he is perfect love, the embodiment of other centeredness, you know. And I think the repercussions of who he is in all of our lives is is kind of what we do in this song. We kind of flesh that out. And um, and so our response is a thousand times my soul will sing hallelujah, yet I will sing a thousand more. Like this is never ending because your love is never ending. Um, so that would be probably one of my favorites. Excellent. And you're one of the primary vocalists on this album, correct? Uh, I think we all are. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I mean the I primary think, female vocalist. The primary female. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and then we have Melinda on, on one of the tracks and she's just amazing. Um, but yeah, the awesome. three of us. Yeah. Awesome. What about you, Peter? Do you have a favorite song or anything that stands out lyrically for you? Yeah. Uh, my uh, personal favorite is um, definitely Biased on it. Um, <laughs> it's a song I wrote uh, with some people in Nashville called Ruins. Um, and um, I think I love this song so much because it's a very, uh, it's a very personal song. It, um, it came at a really uh, kind of uh, perfect time in my life uh, where, I don't know, I, I've said this when we were introducing it in church, but I feel like it's really easy for people as Christians to feel like when they come into church or, or around people who are Christ followers to act like they have, you know, everything together, like everything's perfect in their life. And I think that um, the cool thing about this song, Ruins, is it it, it kind of makes people get vulnerable and, and talks about this idea that sometimes we feel like we're in a state where we're just a bunch of broken pieces. And, you know, maybe at one point in life, we felt like we stood quite tall and had everything together, but, you know, through circumstances, there's going to be times where we just feel broken. And, um, I, I, I think this song is, is uh, powerful because of the imagery that it portrays. It's this idea, you know, of of ruins being rebuilt and and kind of your soul being the thing that's in ruins. And um, if you if you kind of think about you know the ancient ruins of Greece or or whatever um, ruins you might want to think of, a lot of times they're actually viewed as something that's quite valuable, even though they're broken. And I think that's kind of the way that God looks at us is we might see ourselves as this pile of broken pieces, but God sees us as what we, you know, what we were intended to be. And because he's the architect, he created us. So he knows where each piece goes and he can, he can rebuild us into something, you know, more beautiful than we were before in the first place. And I think that, um, you know, through just a lot of really cool personal stories have kind of come out of that song and, and kind of found their way to me. And it's been really encouraging to just see this kind of, beauty out of brokenness theme um, kind of hit home with just random people. And uh, I, I think that's why I love that song is just, it's a, it's an encouragement and it's also, it's a, it's one of those songs where <laughs> it lets you feel like it's okay to not be okay. But you know, we don't, we don't stay in that state. We come out of that because God is, is a God who will, you know, restore us. And so, um, yeah, I think I think that's got to be my favorite one. Just overall, um, it was a blast to write. Really great writers on that song, and uh, it's been cool to see how God's been using it. So, absolutely. What about you, Corbin? Yeah, I mean, gosh, it's it's hard to choose one. Um, there's there's been a number of reasons why I would say praise the name. There's a number of reasons why I would say greater things. Um, I think for me personally. Uh, one that was really fun to write um, and kind of came from a deep spot in my heart was uh, All the Days. It's the last song on the, on the album. Um, and it, we actually, the, the entire song is written from Psalm 23. 
just straight out of scripture. And uh, it, was, it was interesting. So I wrote it with Leslie Jordan, um, formerly from All Sons and Daughters, and uh, Jesse Reeves. And uh, Jesse was a little late. His plane was delayed getting in. So Leslie and I were just kind of waiting for him to get there and just chatting and uh, just telling her a little bit about, um, you know, for me, I grew up with a lot of anxiety. Um, I had panic attacks from the age of seven, almost every month. And uh, when I was doing a lot more touring with Lincoln, whenever we would fly, it would always, I'd always get those panic attack flare ups and, just kind of had said, you know, I've been, I've been on a journey. Fortunately, I've, I've been through this amazing um, healing process with that and haven't had, haven't had a panic attack in uh, a little over two years now. But as I was ex- as explaining this, uh, this kind of journey to her, um, she was like, man, that's, that's interesting. I've kind of gone through something very similar. And then Jesse walked through the door and, and he was like, hey, sorry, I'm late. Let's go. And so we kind of had this thought, like we we're just right in the middle of that conversation. So I, I kind of just said like, hey, we we're just in this conversation and um, it just feels like maybe we could just try and capture this. Um, and so I just kind of, I put down a little melody, was playing piano. I remember in the room and it's like instantly Jesse's like, boom, Psalm 23. And, uh, to me, it's really special because I, I think when, when you see that Psalm hanging in your friend's, you know, hallway or wherever you see the the verse because it's everywhere or that that passage because it's everywhere you kind of tend to look past it or you take it for granted but it was really cool to sit there in that session for two hours and dissect the you know eight to ten verses i can't remember exactly how many are in there um it's a short little psalm but it just has all this rich um just beautiful almost like a, a guidebook to peace and uh, so, yeah, we, we just kind of started going down and, um, and really the, the lyrics wrote themselves. Like it, it just was one of, those, one of those songs that came together really quickly. And uh, it was funny, then we actually flipped the page to Psalm 24 and wrote Praise the Name. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd say that's, that's one of my, that's, that one's special to me. So when you guys write together, do you have like a certain way you go about it, you know, just like you described, one sits down at the keys or gets the guitar out or you come in with different ideas. Is there a way that you three work together? You know, we've, uh, <laughs> we've done only, we've only written us three a couple times, but um, one of the songs I didn't mention in that first piece was uh, Breakthrough is Coming, um, which again, I think is just so fun uh, to sing, but also just a great message for um, the church today. I think a lot of people are, um, maybe not aware of, of what the spirit can do when it's um, allowed to be unleashed in, in our churches and in his presence allowed to work in our lives. But um, for me, that was a really fun one because we sat down with us three and then a guy named Mark Allen Schoolmeasters and uh, just kind of started talking about like our church, our church's journey. Um, and really it was like, I don't even remember how that one started. I think we just, someone had a melody and we just rolled like it was so fast like everything just started moving this this is a really fun group to write with like i love writing with peter i love yeah. writing with charmaine they they i think we all complement each other um with our different skill sets in writing and it, and it really um makes a very seamless um process as we're going along very cool well last question and this is just up for any of you who would like to respond, what would you say to aspiring worship leaders who are songwriters who are wanting to write for their congregation? Oh, man. Um, Well, something that I learned really early on was if you want to write music, you have to have something to say. And I think the best songs come out of uh, a need for the song to write itself rather than like just trying to dive and find random Christianese words to put, you know, melody to, and, and that, that can work too. But oftentimes it's, it's the stories from within the church coming to life that have the impact. And, and I think that's just something with what, you know, God wants to do with the song. And so if I was to give uh, a worship leader advice on writing music for his church, I would say you got to know your church super well. You got to know what's going on in your church. What are the people going through? 
what is the message series that you're talking about? You know, mm-hmm. is one of the coolest things about this album is it's got this theme in it. If you really were to look at every lyric sheet of this entire record, you would see there's this hope for tomorrow theme mm-hmm. all throughout our songs. Mm-hmm. And we didn't even intend it to be like that, but <laughs> our our senior pastor, uh, Pastor Ray Johnson, has always coined this phrase that your best days are ahead. And that's just been built into us. And it's a big part of our culture at our church. And I think naturally, we just wanted to be ambassadors for that and and help our church to know like, hey, whatever you come in here with, your best days are ahead of you. And so that's been, you know, worded through a lot of the different songs really um, in kind of some cool creative ways. But I think a worship leader at his church, if he's going to write songs, it needs to come from a place of personal conviction of what, you know, God's spirit is wanting to say in and through the people there. And yeah. there's not necessarily like the easiest way to describe how to go about doing that other than having a really, really good connection with, with really what the heartbeat of your church is. And then allowing those stories to kind of come to life through, you know, lyric and melody, I think. That's good, Pete. That's great. Anybody else? I mean, I, I think, I think Pete said it all, uh, even when we're talking to our, um, our Thrive students, we have a school um, and that, you know, basically it's uh, worship leaders in training um, that when we talk to them, it's, it's, it's as simple as you have to um, speak or lead out of what you know to be true, what you're convicted of in your relationship with God doesn't matter if it sounds like the fancy words, doesn't matter if it sounds like Hillsong or, you know, Bethel or anybody else, even if it's simple and, but it's true to you, um, man, the spirit will use that far more than um, you trying to conjure up something that sounds like somebody else. Um, So uh, the same goes for songwriting, the same goes for leading worship. Um, uh, But yeah, that's, that's just to add on to what Pete said. <laughs> Very yeah. good. Corbin, any last words there? You know, I think it's, uh, there's, a, there's a number of facets, but um, I always used to get mad when people said this, but um, songwriting really is like working out a muscle. It's, it's no different than going to the gym and <laughs> doing curls to get bigger biceps. Um, I think that, when I when I originally heard someone say that, it made me really frustrated because I'm like, well, no, that you you can't just like force the creativity, or you can't just uh, work really hard, and that will make a a life changing, a world changing song. But you know, I think there's there's a couple facets to it. If if you have that gift, if you want to cultivate that gift, um, it's going to require the legwork, and we always have the the phrase, it's ten uh, percent inspiration and then ninety percent perspiration <laughs> because it takes a lot to get a song across the finish line. And um, that initial inspiration moment is very important, but it's no, no less important than the, the hard work that it takes to get it across the finish line. Great guys. Well, Charmaine and Peter Corbin thrive worship. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And we just wish you the best and congratulations on eight or 10 years of hard work to get to this point. <laughs> and uh, may you not be disappointed if you don't sell 20,000 records every week from here on out. But <laughs> congratulations on what you've done. It is a marvelous album. You're marvelous people. And we just send our love and greetings to Lincoln and uh, to uh, your pastor and to your church and your fellowship. And we look for many more great things out of you guys. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Thanks John. John. Hey, what a fantastic show today. I hope you caught all the value bombs that were dropped on this one and that you'll begin to immediately incorporate them into your songwriting. You know, you can get even more valuable songwriting tools and inspiration when you join NCS membership. You can become a part of a growing community of songwriters from around the world and tap into some of the most powerful resources available to step you up in your songwriting destiny. Check out NCS membership now at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com and get ready for some exponential power to help you fulfill your call to write. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.